Just taking a second, Professor. Spira, give me a second. Yeah, that's all right. Here we go. Okay, excellent. Um, well, thank you everyone for listening or watching. This is another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast, and we have an excellent guest. Oh, damn. Sorry, give me a second. Sorry, I was that was just echoing back at me there. Sorry, give me a second. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, right, good, good, good. Yes, another episode of the Love Fruit Podcast. We have a fantastic guest, Professor Spira, the one and only. Uh, and I came across Professor Spira on YouTube a number of years ago, and he was talking about some of the same stuff that that I was watching other people talk about, but he had his own approach in a different way and he'd come at it from a different direction. And not only does he have some great videos, but he has, he has rewritten or updated a very famous series of books uh, by Professor Arnold Errett. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on and, and that kind of experience. And, uh, and obviously those books are talking about a mucus-free diet and we'll maybe go into what that means. And I'm just really curious and interested to find out more about you and your lifestyle, Professor Spira, and everything you do. And um, would you like to start by maybe giving a little bit of an introduction to everyone watching and listening as to your story, your journey, and how you, how you went from, I imagine, a kind of a normal standard diet and lifestyle to what you're doing now? Sure. Yeah, I started practicing diet around 2002. And before that, I was at my heaviest, almost 300 pounds. And I suffered from a number of chronic illnesses. They had these real bad allergies every year, chronic migraines almost every day. They had medicine for me at my school that I went to. And I would almost every day go and get Advil or Tylenol or anything just from the nurse's office. Uh, then I started taking the real heavy kind of migraine medicine, which is really just sleep medicine. They don't really have anything, at least back yeah. then, they didn't have, really have anything that really help you other than just put you to sleep and hope when you wake up, the migraine is gone. Uh, and chronic bronchitis, issues with my knee, you know, I just, I could go on with the issues that I had, but I thought that that was normal. I didn't think anything was wrong with these because people around me had similar issues and you know growing up I had a really ill mother that passed away when I was in, uh, <clears throat> in the uh, sixth grade and so I just accepted that that's what humanity is that's just health that's what we're in that's the situation we're in uh, didn't think too much about diet I had tried to diet and lose weight you know it was a focus on trying to lose weight and all that kind of stuff in high school you know I played football uh, so I started working out a lot and people started really saying okay wow that you know I, you know I started getting a lot of praise because I was getting kind of big and bulky and muscular but it I was miserable you know I wasn't feeling good and so I went to college conservatory of music uh, the University of Cincinnati in the United States here to study jazz. I'm a jazz trombonist, just totally love music. I and mean, I had different paths I could have went down, but I decided to go down the music path. That, that was, I just feel that. That was that my spiritual connection was manifest whenever I would play music. I would always come back to it. And so in my journey of learning how to play music, I met somebody by the name of Willie Smart, a.k.a. Brother Air. And I knew him for almost nine months or so before he really started telling me about the Mucus's diet. He just jazz drummer. And so I would see him at jam sessions and we would get together and play. And I was kind of a young guy trying to learn how to play the music. And so I, and he was older, uh, a little older guy. So I was hanging out with him, learning how to play. Then there's the, the fateful day where me and my friend were at a jam session and it's at the intermission of the jam session and they have this whole place, food, table of food 
and me and my friend uh, Ryan Wells went and got a plate. I had all these chicken wings and all this stuff on the plate. And uh, Brother Air is sitting across from us just giving us this look, just like he can't hold it anymore. He can't <laughs> hold his tongue. And so he he just kind of tells us like, man, you know, and he starts telling us about the mucus diet and what he had been doing, because at that time he had, I think, a year or two prior, he had eaten nothing but fruit for an entire year. And so he was just blowing our mind. I'd never heard nothing like that. Mm -hmm. uh, he was talking about fasting and mucus, all that kind of stuff. And so after that, you know, I got the mucus diet healing system book and read it and <laughs> you know, the rest is history. It totally changed uh, my life. Just the way that I thought about diet, the way I thought about health, the potential of what we can do. And I just decided to go down that path. That's amazing. So uh, like a lot of people, you kind of met a person that was sort of an inspiration to you, someone you met in real life. And um, yeah, I don't think maybe a lot of people haven't heard of uh, Welly Smart or Brother Air as you're talking about. Mm. Him. And I've I've watched a little bit of some of your like conversations with him and in interviews, and he seems like an interesting uh, an interesting guy as well. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely a one one of a kind, you know, one of <laughs> one of a kind type of type of guy. <laughs> So let's talk about your, so most people or a lot of people don't tend to do this overnight. Did you transition towards this diet? Did it take you time to start changing to a kind of mucusless lifestyle or what, what was the transition? Yeah. So I started at first, you know, read the book and started to experiment with some of the menus and the things. I was very lucky to have Brother Air at my disposal. But even real early on, the first several months, I tried my best to do get as far as I could on my own mm -hmm. because I had a sense that Brother Air had spent years seeing people say they're going to get into the diet and try to do it. And then he never hears from them again and they fall off. Like I already had a, a sense that that was how this thing often works. So to gain some respect, I knew, OK, I just need to do this myself and get as far as I could. And if I had questions, I would just ask him the questions. But I wasn't trying to, t you know, get you know, I wasn't trying to have him respect me up in front. Like, yeah, I'm doing this because it's kind of like, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we'll see, you know, is that which some people might look at as as a harsh attitude, but just after years and years and years of pe seeing people come and go, I understood why he would have that kind of attitude. So there is a level of let, let's see how long you, you last and hang. And so, uh, but I think he could tell that I was serious when I, the first time I was trying to do enemas and I was in the bathroom. <laughs> As I've read in the book, and Eric mentions the the bulb enema as, as an option, and so I had bought one of those little bulb enema things and was trying to figure out how to do it, and I'm like, man, this is not, I don't know what this is, and uh, so I called <laughs> Brother Aaron, he told me, he's like, man, you need to get an actual enema bag. And so then I went and got the enema bag. And then I, when I was in there, I called him again. And I kind of was like, okay, I got the bag. I heated up the distilled water and the lemons. And so, all right, what do I do? <laughs> and so you would kind of walk me through it. And I'm like, all right, thanks, click. And uh, and I did for the first two years of practicing the diet, I was a resident advisor at a dorm at a college. And I was doing them in, in a public bathroom that locked. So <laughs> wouldn't walk in but right outside the door of the bathroom that i had to use was a pool table and people playing pool so i <laughs> i would come down i made had this duffel bag and i'd put all my enema stuff in it and uh, you know prepare my actual enema stuff upstairs and then put it in this bag and i would go down <laughs> And, uh, and just, just go into this bathroom and every once in a while, somebody would knock on the door cause they were trying to get in and I would just be like, I'm in here and, uh, I'd do what I need to do. And, you know, half hour later, I'd come out of there and people looking at me like, why are you in there so long? And, but at, at that time I just, just didn't care. You know, that I was something early on that really helped me out was not caring what people thought about me in that in the social setting and all that kind of stuff i kind of just 
I I was able to be that kind of oddball person that's not fitting in. I'm not going to the restaurants anymore and hanging out and eating at the little parties, eating all the stuff. And back then, as you know, 2002, it was way worse than it even is today, just because veganism was not a thing. People weren't talking about raw foodism like they are today. Uh, vegetarianism was, you know, none of that. I, you wasn't seeing none of that. It was that was just starting to come into fruition. Why before I left college, they had just created the, uh, a vegan pan. They had a vegan pan in the uh, in the dining area. So if you were vegan, you could. And, I, and I'd like to think I helped push them in that direction because I had a meeting one time with the dining hall people and kind of laid out to them what I'm doing. So they would leave me alone because I was going down and taking big things of broccoli and whole heads of cabbage and stuff, which was just supposed to be on display. Uh, same thing. I'd take whole lemons and all these things that they would just put there for display. But I was taking them and and putting them in my bag and going upstairs to my room to make my salads and stuff. And so one time I had a meeting with them. I'm like, look, I gave them a copy of the Mucus Diet book. This is what I do. I don't eat all those burgers and pizza and all that stuff over there. So let me take these vegetables because <laughs> that's what I'm using. And so, and they, they didn't bother me. You know, they just, they left me alone. And, uh, but but yeah, but that was <laughs> some of some of the early days were were pretty uh, pretty intense. Yeah. So what what exactly is the mucusless lifestyle for people that don't know about it? Like, what does the what does the book say, and what did what did you learn from it, and and how do you apply it on a day to day basis? So you know, the mucusless diet healing system, as I see it, is essentially a transitional system to take you from wherever you are physiologically, health-wise, diet-wise, to take you toward a mucus-free lifestyle or a mucus-free diet. So it's not an overnight proposition. We're not putting pressure on anybody says, oh, you got to be totally mucus free or, you know, you got to be raw or you got to eat nothing but fruit. Or you got to do long fast. None of that. Now, people peg us with that. And that's kind of one of the missions that I'm on is to get people to understand where we're coming from, because when people try to paint us as being extremists, we're the opposite of that. You know, we are actually very much in the middle. I call mucus free uh, lifestyle the middle way or the middle path because it's not it's not as aggressive it's basically what you do with it it's a tool a, a methodology that you can apply to your life and your physiology where you're at so it's not strict which is hard for some people some people they would prefer something that's more strict that's more defined because that's the way their mind works but with this it takes a little bit more study, a little bit more nuance to understand how can I apply these principles to my life so that I can effectively and permanently transition? Because that's another piece of it is to be able to do, make permanent changes as opposed to doing something where you're so fast and you're just trying to, oh, I'm going to be all fruit or raw or something like that. And then a year or two later, you know, you've fallen off and you're, <laughs> you know, the folks nowadays are making the YouTube videos like I'm no longer vegan. And, <laughs> you know, so if you practice the transition diet properly and you're applying the system, which very few people talk about system, uh, if you do that, then you have a good chance of success going down this path. So do you want to go into a little bit about that system? And uh, yeah, just uh, about what exactly that is. Yeah, sure. So the mucus diet healing system consists of progressively changing menus that go from mucus and pus forming foods to non mucus forming foods. Non-mucus forming foods are essentially foods that do not turn into slime in the body. Now, this is a thing that a lot of people get confused about because there's a difference between slime residue that's left over from pus and mucus forming foods and the lymphatic response or the, the secretion of lymphatic fluids 
from the body. There's a, there's definitely a relationship and there's an interconnectedness, but it's not the same thing. So when people say uh, make the connection, OK, well, I eat something and then there's some mucus that's that can be a po false positive because you can eat an apple. And if you're encumbered, you might get a mouth full of mucus. The apple didn't cause the mucus. You're the apple actually helped to push kind of push it out, you know, create a response to where you're able to eliminate a little bit. Whereas, uh, you know, you, so if you're really encumbered, also, you could eat some mucus forming foods and not, not have a response like that. Uh, so essentially, we're transitioning. How do we do that? We're using various pr simple principles to do so to essentially whatever you're eating now, we're just going to take some gradual steps. Now there's some larger principles such as we generally want to try to avoid definitely not having a big breakfast. That big breakfast idea is ridiculous. Anyway, a lot of people around the world never picked up on that, but uh, a lot of people in the West got into this big breakfast idea. That's that's out. But you can uh, basically, if you know, if you need something in the morning, you could have something light or some juices or fruit or that kind of thing. But essentially, you get to a point where you have two meals a day, roughly. Uh, so, and and those meals change. Is that's then that's why it's hard to kind of pin down and say, okay, this is exactly what it is, yeah. or say, okay, this is what I eat in a day. Because it changes. And even in the Mucus Diet book, there's some examples of different weeks. Say that weeks one and two do this, weeks three and four. And those are guidelines and gives you examples of what you can apply in, in your own life, where you don't have to necessarily eat those exact things that's in there, yeah. but it's giving you a perspective on what to do. So there's the food side of it, but then we also have the uh, the fasting part and the difference here instead of just saying okay we're going to do some kind of long fast or we're dry fasting water fasting Aaron incorporates short term mostly juice fast into uh, systematically incorporated into the dietary change and so it's very therapeutic it happens and unfolds over time so again it's giving your body the chance to react you know starting off with a 24 at what he calls a 24 hour fast what some people might call a one meal a day plan so you know Eric he's the, the first person that I ever read use the term intermittent fast you know that term has sort of gotten popular over the past four or five years the way that some people use that term I think is problematic is not always connected in to to the way that Eric originally used it but that concept of either going a certain amount of your day where you're not eating constantly or fasting for one day, fasting for several days, you know, that is coming out of directly out of Eric's book and his tradition. So with fasting, really the most important thing about fasting is breaking a fast. And that's something that's laid out in the mucus diet healing system book and rational fasting very uh, well. I've seen a lot of people out here that are doing these fasts, but they're not <laughs> when it comes to breaking the fast, they really don't know what they're doing or they're they either break it too aggressively or not aggressively enough or they lose control and end up binging. And so the again, the progressive yet rational approach to this process allows for uh, you know, really getting this stuff out of the system because that ultimately that's what is going on. And so if you throw a little bit of colon irrigation or enemas, and we do lemon, lemon and distilled water juice uh, enemas or lemon juice and distilled water enemas, uh, throw that in there, a little bit of sunbathing, some exercise. Now you're getting into the system and putting it all, all the pieces together. That's, that's, that's great. Let's talk about Arnold Edit. I mean, who was this guy? I mean, I mean People now there's a lot more information about doing a raw diet or a fruitarian kind of diet, but mm -hmm. I mean he was like a pioneer back over a hundred years ago, right? And yeah, yeah. What what do you know about him? You obviously have studied a lot of his stuff. Yeah, I mean he's one of the most important and yet miss uh, uh, and ignored figures in the history 
of naturopathy, natural health, fasting, veganism, vegetarianism, raw foodism, any of those isms. Professor Arnold Arrett is the, at the foundation of that. Uh, the Back to Nature movement, which started in uh, it, it, it which started in Switzerland and Germany, yeah, uh, in the late 1800s, and then in he became a kind of a poster poster boy for the Back to Nature movement uh, when it was in su- moved to Southern California. As, uh, as that's basically that, that story. A lot of people that was in that movement moved yeah. right before World War One. They moved over. A lot of them found their way to Southern California. And that kind of that established the culture that is that resonates to this day. Yeah. Uh, the, the so-called hippie movement. By the time you get to that in the 60s, it had degenerated and it went mainstream in terms of a culture. A lot of the health in the vegetarian or vegan aspects and fasting and fruit and all that kind of stuff that had kind of been suppressed and moved out. And it was, then it became about, you know, having free love and drugs and all that kind of stuff. But the origin of all of that really goes back to that back to nature movement where Arnold Eric was just so influential uh, in, in terms of that whole, you know, that whole piece. And so, uh, yeah, so his, he was just doing some remarkable things and it, it was blowing everyone's mind because he was healing thousands of people had these sanitariums people would come in there with so-called terminal illnesses where they had medical people didn't have, know what to do with them people would come in there and he would fast them and transition them and do animas and all that kind of thing and heal them and just one after the other after the other. So he was getting more and more famous. Well, at the same time, you have the burgeoning medical establishment starting to develop. And, you know, and there's a whole history there we won't get into. But essentially, Eric's work was suppressed. Uh, you know, I know in in Europe there he made enough of a uh, of a statement and his work kind of rumbled things enough to where. There were eratists and non-eratists. <laughs> Everybody was forced to choose. Are you going to go down this and kind of believe in what he's talking about or more the what became the conventional medical wisdom? But in the United States, it was it was as if Eric was totally blackballed. I mean, he couldn't get or I don't know how much he tried to publish in American journals, but because he was published in a number of European journals. But over here in America he just had to publish himself and he, you know, aligned himself early on with Benedict Lust, who's considered the father of naturopathy, opened the first naturopathic college. Uh, and he, that was his, really his first publisher. And then when he got together with Fred Hirsch, uh, they invented, uh, created arid publishing and, uh, which, uh, you know, th- those books and that tradition do, do exist to this day. And that's kind of the, the big, that becomes the Fred Hirsch story uh, after that point. But, uh, but yeah, just Arnold Arrow is such an, a seminal figure in the history of all of this clean living, you know, back to nature kind of consciousness and in, uh, in, in dietary practice. Yeah. It's so interesting the what you're talking about there with the, the back to nature movement and, I don't know if you've ever seen some of those books. I can't remember the name of the books, but there's some books out there with pictures of all these guys. Yeah, that's that's Gordon Kennedy, Children of the Sun. Right. Yeah. I recommend that. I think it's back in print. For a while, it was out of print, and uh, and I think they, I think it can be found again now. I think I might be wrong, but uh, yeah, I, I got, yeah, I have that book, and uh, I have. Uh, if anybody wants to go to mucusfreelife.com or if you do a Google search for mucusfreelife.com, Gordon Kennedy, you'll see some of the, some articles from Gordon Kennedy. And one of them is called, well, there's a still air it, which is an excellent article, but then there's also the uh, hippie roots article, which is essentially a condensed version of a lot of information that's in that, uh, that children of the sun book. Yeah. I'd love to read more about that. Cause what I find so funny is I've been to a lot of the modern sort of fruit festivals that go on mm-hmm. now. Mm-hmm. And 
it looks the pictures from that are very mm-hmm. similar. It's like guys with huge watermelons, right? Beards, like long hair, like, yeah. kind of like none of them are overweight and stuff. So it's pretty, and they're all like their skins looks great and everything. So yeah, cool. yeah, exactly. So, that's, that's the tradition. So yeah, so we're not doing anything new. It's going back, but um, so yeah, Eric's a, an amazing figure. But, and what got you into sort of what you're doing now with updating his work or writing it for like the modern era, I guess. Mm. So a couple years into practicing the mucus's diet healing system, I read, I've just, cause I would keep reading a book. It's one of those books. You just read it, reread it. Every time you read it, you get something more out of it. And I was just reading it and reading it. And I'm like, there's so much here that is so important yet I would talk to other people that would read the book and they would be missing so much. Right. It was just like, it was almost as if they just couldn't grasp some of the things and it would just go over their heads. So they wouldn't even know that it was there. They would just be like, they're just reading stuff. Uh, and they would little bits and pieces they would absorb, but the majority of the book, it was like, they just forgot it. It just didn't penetrate at all. And I was like, okay, I started making notes for myself. I digitized the book because these are things that you just, it's just started to become possible to do easily with home stuff. You know, in the nineties, that was hard to find, to be able to scan stuff and then have text to be recognized. I mean, that was real, you know, that was super hard to do. Once you get to the mid 2000s, the the Acrobat software and these scan to text things, it was starting to come of age. And so I scanned the entire uh, uh, some version of I think probably the 1994 version of the entire Mucus's Diet and Healing System book and then went through and kind of edited it. And did, so there was a good digital copy. And I started putting all these notes in it. And at that time, I all I was even <laughs> I even started going line by line and dividing it up into verses like the Bible has different, you know, one point, <laughs> you know, Genesis one twenty nine. I was, it yeah, was kind yeah, of yeah. Like lesson one, two point, you know, I was doing that. And I'm like, you know, and so I think I did that for the whole first lesson. Uh, but I had notes in the margins and all that. And so this was around probably 2004, 2005. And I said that one day in the future, sometime I'm going to put out an annotated and revised and edited version of the Mugus's diet. Of course, annotated versions of books are tr- is a tradition for important books. There's a lot of there's annotated Bibles, there's annotated literature. Yeah, all the important books have an annotated versions. Yeah. So I'm okay, Eric. Book deserves a good annotated version. I'm not telling people to not investigate and read other versions if if anything yeah check out a bunch of different versions because there's actually very different you get a version from benedict lust and you get a version from 1924 Eric publishing it's going to be different from 1956 Eric publishing so then these yeah. are the kinds of things i studied to really get deep into this work and Eric's uh Eric's work but uh, but yeah, so I just started to think one day in the future, I'm going to do that. Now, I didn't know that I was going to do it this soon into the future, because at the time I'm thinking, OK, I aspire to be one of the best musicians on the planet. So I'm focused on that, trying to become a great jazz musician. And I figured that I would have been to- touring and doing all this kind of stuff Well, the universe has an interesting way of giving you what you're really supposed to be doing. And so uh, there was a point where I got the message and it was like, okay, no, you need to do this. Now the music, you you're going to get to that, but right now you need to take care of this. And so I, uh, I had had all these writings over the years uh, where I was emailing back with people and basically doing consultations. uh, And, and also Facebook had sort of emerged and I started working with people a little bit and so I had all these writings. So the first thing I did was create my book, uh, Spirit Speaks, Dialogues and Essays on the Mucus Diet Healing System. And I put out a digital version of that. And around that same time, I start working on this annotated version. And then I put that out. So they come out as PDFs first that I just sell from 
a website. And then a year later in 2000, 2014, I put out the paperback version on Amazon and uh, along with some of Eric's other books, you got Thus Speak of the Stomach, Definite and Cure of Chronic Constipation. These are kind of pamphlets or smaller books, yeah. uh, Rational Fasting. And I put those out and start just getting the inspiration to really put this information out. I had a website where I had free information about Eric and a little blog and that kind of stuff. But once I decided to, okay, we're going to put this book out there. There's a lot of people that are interested in it. The people that read it are blown away by it and really like it and appreciate it. So let's do this. And I got serious about it. Uh, we created Mucus Free Life LLC. And you know that's where we are today, just creating content to try to educate people, get people excited and interested in the work, reach new people. Uh, now I have an e-course, Mucus's Diet Healing System e-course, which I'm really excited about. It took me years. I started working on that really right back in 2014. And so it yeah. took a long time to do it. Uh, and, and we're just growing. We're going to have the uh, Eric, second annual Arnold Eric Day celebration. We've created a day. There's days for everybody else. So we created an Arnold Eric Day. Nice. And, uh, and this year we're... Uh, on the July 27th and 28th in Columbus, Ohio, where we will have the uh, Arnold Eric Day celebration. And, uh, and so we're kind of, we're right in the process now of getting all the details of that, working that out. But, uh, but yeah, it's, it's growing with the Mucus Free Life LLC and the movement. I was always interested in growing really in accordance with the principles of the transition. Cause I saw how a lot of things come and go, and especially in this natural healing kind of alternative type of lifestyle, there's a there's a lot certain people that get really popular real quick, but then their popularity dies down real quick, and their influence yeah. kind of disappears, or, or they try to create a, a community and it comes together real quick, but then it, it totally disbands and disintegrates and falls apart. And so I wanted to create something just like, okay, I'm not going to try to be the, we're not going to be super popular, at least not right off. We're not going to try for that. We're basically going to try to put together the best information that we can make it easily accessible to people. And then once we do that, you know, now we're in the process of really saying, Hey, we have something here that everybody should check out. That's great, man. I, I love that. Um, what about telling us a little bit about what is your daily kind of diet? What do you eat in a day? Does it change? Um, is it kind of consistent or how does it work for you? So it, ch it changes over the years. And one thing that I think I want to do sometime in the near future is make a video that's what I eat in a day, but then it would be, you know, quote or, uh, over the years or something, you know, I haven't come up with a title yet, but basically what I eat, what I ate in year one of practicing the diet is different than what I ate in year five is different from what I ate in year 10, year 15. And now, you know, I'm e always evolving it yet. I'm always applying the fundamental principles of the transition diet. And so that's yeah. kind of different from other things. The, a lot of people ask, well, what's your ultimate goal? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it right now. I'm already, yeah. I'm in, my goal is to practice the mucus of diet healing system to the best of my ability. Uh, and, and let me see where that takes me as opposed to saying, okay, I'm going to try to be, I want to be all fruitarian by a certain date or I want to yeah. be all mucus free. Cause you don't need that type of pressure. If you're practicing the system, you're going to get where you need to go. But so, but right now uh, I'll, I'll, well, I'll say, one of the most classic plateau points of my transition is probably what Eric called his standard sanitarium menu, which is no breakfast, maybe some juices, or if you do eat anything early on, it would be fruit, then fruit in the afternoon. So raw fruit, some kind of mono raw fruit meal in the afternoon. Sure. 
and then some kind of vegetable meal in the evening. So it might just be a raw salad. It might be raw salad with some kind of cooked vegetables, might be raw salad, cooked vegetables and some kind of mucus lean item, which would be the mucus forming stuff. Or that's that's where how we would categorize, say, some kind of processed vegan foods or something like that. Sure. Uh, So all of that fits within the system. So but I was always pretty uh, into the mechanics of it. And so I would really got into the way that I would have that afternoon meal, just got used to doing the fruit then yeah. and have vegetables in the evening. And so I rarely would deviate from that. Now, sometimes part of the system is you, you would switch it up. And so you would have your vegetable meal in the afternoon and fruit in the evening. And that will create right. a whole different kind of elimination in your body. Right. Uh, once you've done that a, a number of times and you kind of get that, uh, that tension and release process in your body and you've gotten rid of a lot of stuff, then you can kind of go back to uh, whatever makes you feel good at that point, whatever sure, your sure. point is. Uh, so uh, then as far as fasting in the past couple of years, I haven't done as much fasting as I did years ago. I did a ton of fasting. Yeah. Uh, and did really long fast and juice fast and all kinds of stuff. Uh, and so right now I'm experimenting with things where I'm not really, you know, I'm not really experimenting with different types of fasting right now. Cause that's just not where my, where it's not where my research is at and where my right. physiology is, but yeah, but that's, that's kind of my standard thing. And I actually have, uh, if you go to mucusfreelife.com, I have a free download which is a menu pl- intro to menu planning. Right. And so I kind of break down because this was something that I noticed that people, they weren't thinking in this, f- in this frame. And yeah. a lot of people say, well, where do I start? What do I do? And so I kind of lay out how you, if you want to get really detailed with it, you can sit down with a, with a spreadsheet and lay out your day and find a way to incorporate air. It's principle principles into your day so whatever you don't have to change your day you learn how to incorporate and that becomes the art of practicing the mucus diet healing system is learning how to incorporate the principles into your life regardless of what it is you know i've worked with people that have worked uh that worked at nights and so they wouldn't they, they would get up their their morning was like getting up at one o'clock in the afternoon and uh, and so we had to we worked on some different ways to adapt the mucus's diet to fit that and so uh uh but yeah yeah you can get that free download mucusfreelife.com and you'll you should see the uh the little form there cool that's that's excellent and and uh, i guess that if people want to get your books and things that would be the same place mucusfreelife.com Yes. Uh, yeah. Mucusfreelife.com. If you want to get the book bundle, if you do mucusfreelife.com forward slash revised uh, dash mucus list dash diet, then you can get access to a special sale page where I'm selling all seven of the books that we publish for one low price. And, they're in, and there's different, we got a couple different packages there because there's different formats and stuff. Uh, but that's because uh, there's a few books that we that we pr- make that people don't even know that we make, you know, because I didn't necessarily promote them real heavy. But uh, we had there's a book I recently came out that goes along with the e-course called yeah. uh, Spears Notes, which is essentially a uh, Cliff's Notes or one of those books that condenses down and outlines the entire Mucus Diet book. Uh, and so th- that's available now. We just put out uh, physical fitness through a superior diet, which is an old Eric book that was out of previously out of uh, out of publish uh-huh. uh, or out of print, I should say. And so that's something that we recently put out. And, but uh, but yeah, I would check that out. But yeah, go to mucusfreelife.com and you can kind of get caught up with with everything and sign up. And that way you'll get uh, access to even some more little coupons and sales and all that kind of stuff and, and get plugged into our newsletter so that you, you know what's going on. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I want to talk to you about your music and your jazz musician. Did, did you, do you feel your creativity or your music changed at all when you started to practice this diet or 
Was it always kind of going in that direction? No, I mean, every, everything elevated. Yeah, my creativity, my ability to play, the, th to think clearly and creatively, all of that was enhanced so much practicing the Mucus Diet Healing System. And that was one of the things that really hooked me and one of the things that made me want to practice a diet because I wasn't really thinking in terms of like, okay, I, I want to be healthy and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I want to be the best musician that I can be. So that was my way into it. And his brother Air told me in that first time that we talked about the mucus diet, he said that the, the trombone isn't my instrument. The body is my instrument. <laughs> so it makes sense to clean this up and to get this together. And then whatever I choose to do, whether it's a trombone or piano or drums or whatever, things are going to flow much better, you know, less obstructed. And, and that's exactly what I experienced. Uh, it just just transformed everything. I was able to think in just ways that was so different. And at yeah. the same time, I was able to, study. I always wanted to have the ability to really think very well and just just be able to yeah. break things down and, and, and explore vistas of human consciousness and that kind of stuff. And I tried to do that. I was on that path and I, cause I've thought differently than a lot of people for a long time, but with the mucus's diet, that was like the key to this unlocked that and i got to a point i studied something called photo reading but that, that allowed me to read books at a just a rapid pace you can just you can just like fly through books and, and retain a lot of that information uh so i was getting into that a lot of that kind of they had a period of going through all the different help self-help stuff and it was all so enhanced by me practicing the music diet it's yeah just want more to learn about the mind and the learning process and uh, all of those kinds of things, philosophy and you know, just going through all of these different things and uh, which was really exciting. I compare it to the scene in the matrix where he learns rapidly, you know, where they put that, that stuff on him and, they, uh, uh, and, and he just learns yeah. really quickly. Uh, and that's what it was starting to feel like that I could just, I, just read something or think about something or study something and just get right down to the core of what that thing had to offer that information or that idea or whatever it was. And um, so that's something that I, I try to share and I try to teach to the extent of, I want people to be able to think logically for themselves and the art of thinking is long is like a long lost art form sure and that's something that i really try to push people to get into is where don't don't take my word for it you don't have to believe me or believe air it but let's look at these ideas and explore them logically and just look at look at them in a certain way uh, because that's a tradition that air it was is coming out of there's the old tradition of the scientist slash engineer slash mathematician slash uh theologian you know they they were all wrapped up into one thing it wasn't until you know in recent decades and millennia where they started separating it where you had scientists over here and they would not it, they weren't allowed to think about spirituality you know to, yeah just as a generalization. Uh, and then if you had the philosophers, then maybe they would dabble in certain things, but th these different communities would just get very uh, sterile uh, to, to that extent. Whereas back in the day, you know, the Leo Leonardo da Vinci's and, you know, I kind of go down the list of people that's in that tradition of being kind of a, uh, uh, you know, the not you know, Jack of all trades, but just, that type of mentality and approach. And uh, so that's something I'm real passionate about is just people learning how to think logically and to look at situations and dissect them them themselves. Yeah. And that's an important thing with this kind of a diet is if people can look at their diet logically, they, they will come to the conclusion that eating 
like you're eating is a, is a better way. Um, what about with Brother Air? How did he get into this himself? Like, where, where was his inspiration, or did he just get it from the books? Did he have teachers himself? Uh, what's the kind of lineage there of the of the mucusless diet? Yeah. So yeah. So Brother Air, when he was 15 years old, he was inspired by Dick Gregory, right? Uh, activist and you know, kind of uh, ultra alternative health person, uh, comedian back in the day. And uh, and so he didn't start getting into anything yet. But I Dick's. Uh, would talk about water and vegetarianism and these kind of things. So that piqued his interest. Then several years later, he was in a period where he was reading all these books and he just would buy all these different health books and was just reading all kinds of stuff. Uh, it had gotten into juicing a little bit. It was just kind of one of those situations that some of us go through. We're just reading all this different stuff. And he had actually purchased the mucus diet book, but he hadn't really studied it yet. And he came across uh, a man named Victor Buttram in Cincinnati, Ohio. And there was a community of people that had started practicing the mucus diet healing system. And, and that lineage, lineage goes back to musicians, felt jazz musicians that had actually been into uh, either been into the diet or knew about it. And so they were sharing that information. And uh, so Brother Air got started hanging with Vic. And before you know it, he was he just really got into the diet. He took another look at the book, started reading it and studying it and said, wait a minute, this this is so far more advanced than all this other other things I've been reading about. Uh, and what really took him was the paradigm shift to thinking as the body is an air gas engine right. that runs off of air as a, which is self-evident, but our mentality is, you know, our society is so entrenched with eating that we, we don't even think about air, Mo, you know, the average person in the mainstream society. Uh, but when Arnold Eric says the body is an air gas engine and food is a tool that helps the body eliminate then, and even the breathing process is an elimination process. And so that really woke him up. And so he started to practice really hard and did a lot of juicing in those early years. And, uh, and the enemas in about, I guess it was maybe 10 years in, he started to do the lemon juice enemas because Vic did, did some and was telling him about it. And brother Air's like, eh, that makes sense. Let me try that. And he, once he started doing lemon juice enemas, he just really took to him and said, wow, this, this is taking things to a whole different level. And then he just continued doing them. And, uh, but, uh, but yeah, so, but that's, that's where he's, he's coming from kind of coming out of that. And in fact, he's going to be on my, po my podcast on, Friday, and we're specifically going to talk about those early years of his uh, practicing the mucus diet. That would be great. Yeah, I, I saw that you started that that recent. That's excellent. Um, yeah, so it's really fascinating to me to hear all these different ways that people got into this kind of thing. And I had heard about Dick Gregory, and uh, so I've, I've, I'm aware of him, and he's influenced obviously quite a lot of people with being quite famous as well. Yeah. Um, what do you think the future is of what you're doing? Are you, do you see uh, quite a lot of people embracing what you're putting out there? Is it, um, is the message getting out, you think? Yes. Yeah, it, people are starting to really plug in and take thing, take it seriously. We're getting a lot of people that try, and I predicted this around four years ago. I said, in about four or five years, we're going to get a lot of people that had tried to do raw foodism, that tried to be fruitarians, that tried to do a lot of the extreme fasting protocols and stuff. They will have gotten to the ceiling and taken that as far as they can take it. And they're, they're either going to fall all the way back or they're going to remember, they're going to come across us or have remembered something that we said and say, let me go check out that mucus diet healing system. Right. That's exactly what's been happening because a lot of people are 
seeing like, okay, I can't sustain eating nothing but fruit for the rest of my life. I haven't transitioned yet. So you feel good for a while, but you get to a point where, or mo- I say most people, yeah, you, maybe there's a couple people here and there that uh, are, that's able to do some, some remarkable things and those people be praised and just like any, you would praise a great musician or something. They just have physiological excellence. But uh, the majority of people that I come across, you, you know, we, they're, if you don't transition properly, you're going to have problems sooner or later. It's just, it's just going to be hard. Yeah. So, uh, so I see a lot, a lot more people getting into it. One thing, one perspective I have is that, People all over the world know the company Apple that Steve Jobs started. Yeah. They have yet to realize or know that Arnold Errett is one of the primary inspirations for Apple. (laughs) The name (laughs) Apple and the symbol Apple, because Steve Jobs was into Nugus's diet healing system or Professor Arnold Errett. He was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer back in the 70s, and he tried to wanted to heal himself naturally. And usually pancreatic, they only give you several months to live. He ended up living another 30 years. And, you know, I got a couple articles about Steve Jobs and his practices, the mucus's diet, because he, he was a little bit too aggressive and not systematic enough. And he even admits that in his biography, one of his biographies that came out recently where he said he was a little extremist uh, with the whole process because he wanted to be fruitarian overnight. So he was doing these apple fasts and all this kind of stuff. And at the same time, building what would become the apple empire. But I look at it as all these people, it's with the nature of the internet and the way things are going, when the time is right, because I don't think it's going to happen before the time is right. But once the foundation is set and the time is right, it can be as easy as all of those people in the world that are aware of and know who Steve Jobs is and Apple. The light can be turned on and all of a sudden those people know about the Mucus's diet and and just totally captures the imagination of, of billions of people. And I, I think that's going to happen now. Do I think it's going to happen soon? I don't know. I'm not good at predicting timelines all the time because oftentimes things happen earlier than I, than I predict. Cause I sort of, I give a, I give time of a long, you know, kind yeah. of a long breath to, uh, to give it a chance. So, but I see that happening, that kind of thing where a, a lot of people are going to get plugged into this information at once. Uh, uh, and it's going to, take off like wildfire, which is why I wanted to create as strong of a foundation of serious practitioners as possible. Because if that, ha- if it happens too soon, then it becomes a situation where it could be a flash in the pan or the yeah. quality of information. I never want the quality of information to suffer. And so when I, you know, like last year, I didn't put out that many videos where I wasn't in the video making mode. Uh, now I finished the e-course uh, and that's so that's where I kind of put a lot of my my focus and energy. But if I was out here just trying to be popular or doing you know that kind of stuff, then I would have a different approach where I'd be putting out content more so for con- consumption and things that, and doing things in a way that I know will spark controversy and get people to view and all that kind of stuff. But I didn't want to take that path. You know, I'd yeah. rather focus on really quality content. Because then when people come to it, they have this treasure trove of stuff that they can yeah. get into. Excellent, man. It's, uh, it's been great to talk to you. I, I, I'm sorry we have to bring the interview to a bit of a, an end pretty quickly. Uh, that's my fault, but it would be great to speak to you another time. We'll get a bit more time to speak at some other point. Yeah, uh, definitely. You, are you in Columbus, Ohio? Is that where you live? Yeah, yeah, Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Cool. Last year, I was in Ohio at the Ohio Pawpaw Festival. I don't know if you've ever mm. heard of that. Have you ever no, had? Paw- no, where, where is that in Ohio? I haven't heard of that. The Pawpaw, the Pawpaw Festival. Um, it's, it's, I think it's like an hour from Columbus, at least. Yeah. I can't remember the exact town. I'd need to look it up. But have you ever had Pawpaw? Have you ever went foraging for Pawpaw in the forests there? 
Not, I mean, I've had it, but I haven't done a lot of foraging for it around here. Sure. That's, that's something to look out for the, you could get a lot of free fruit up there at the pop-up festival. <laughs> it's really cool. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, um, for those, uh, once again, to learn more about Professor Spira, what he's doing, get some of his books, mucusfreelife.com. And you're on YouTube as well, Professor Spira. Yeah. Yeah. Professor Spira, Mucus Free Life, LLC. Uh, yeah. YouTube. I'm all over Facebook. I got different Facebook accounts for Pro Professor Spira. You can find me there, Pro Spira. Uh, we have the support group, Facebook facebook support group uh professor Ar arnold Eric's mucus diet healing system and uh and yeah and then like i said get signed up for the mailing list and that you know we kind of give you all the information on how to find us and you get plugged into to everything that we're doing excellent well thank you very much thanks everyone for listening and watching uh this has been another episode of the love fruit podcast and if you want to learn more about the uh the festival in the uk to learn more about a fruit-based kind of lifestyle, then go to fruitfest.co.uk and you can learn more about what we're doing. So thank you very much, Professor Spira. Hope All to speak right. to you thank again. You, yes. Any last uh, little comment? Any last little thoughts for people? Just, just take this opportunity. If you're hearing me, you've never heard of the mucus's diet before, whether you're already into veganism or fruitarianism or you're just eating hamburgers and pizza every day, you know, I urge you to read the mucus's diet healing system. You know, I have my annotated version, but if you want to read the one of the other versions, find a version, read the mucus's diet healing system and give it a chance. Have an open mind when you read it. You don't have to believe all the philosophies to practice the nuts and bolts and the methods of the system. And uh, so I just urge you to check it out and uh and then uh, uh, allow allow the change to happen go down this path of, of physiological transformation thank you so much and with that we'll leave it there thank you very much for watching and listening everyone all right peace love and breath <laughs>